when Okay, does everyone have uh, their Jupyter Notebook installed? Please uh, just give a thumbs up or yes in the comment section. Yeah, guys, uh, if you have your Jupyter Notebook installed or if you are uh, planning to do in Colab, then also you can do it because we will be using both of them. So if you are with Colab, then it's completely fine. Uh, no need to install Jupyter Notebook. But if you have Jupyter Notebook, then also it's good because both the works completely same one is in the online and another one is in the offline so you can choose any one as per your choice and one more thing i will also show you how to uh, join with collab if you have not yet done right now so nothing to worry but make sure that you are available with any one of them either with jupyter notebook or you are ready with collab so that it makes our session much more interactive that's the main goal of today's meeting everyone together and sharing our knowledge together. Okay, uh, so I think we should start the event within two minutes. Is there any other people left to join? I mean, waiting for joining or not? We have already 35 of 36 yeah right now 36 so i think we shall start within next two minutes guys if you uh, don't see your friends over here just give them a call and uh, tell them to join fast
So is my screen visible to everyone? Please let me know. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So I hope we can start the event. Um, everyone, please uh, let me know because I cannot see the chat box. So please let me know by unmuting yourself that uh, shall we start or not? Yes, we are starting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, uh, firstly, welcome everyone to the first technical event of Developer Student Club SIT. So, you all know that uh, today we are organizing the first technical event of this session, means total this season. So, I hope every one of us has already attended the previous session. That was a complete info session about what we are planning to. And the main motive of joining today's event is just because to interact with us with something new topic something by sharing our knowledge among us okay so what we'll be doing we'll be just going through the python because python is one of the most important programming language and talking about python python deals with a lot of beautiful and super features which are really important in today's day so today's conference today's meeting will be completely technical depending on the hands-on workshop regarding the python so we will be dealing with various important things. So before directly moving on to the uh, hands-on workshop, let's do one thing. Let's know a few basic things, few knowledge about Python. Because the first thing is while you are studying anything or you want to learn something, the first thing that you need is you need to know that why you are learning this thing, right? You need to know this that why should I learn Python or why should, uh, means why Python is so trending nowadays? So to keep these things clear in your mind, let's start today's event. I hope you guys um, will be together till the event ends and your cooperation is the most important thing in today's event because at the end of the day, we are all together bringing up a good community because the main concept of DSC is just to build a good community and to develop as a community. It's not an individual game and it's not something that we should do by ourselves only. It's all about building a community and today I'm sharing a knowledge with you guys. Someday you guys will be sharing knowledge with us. So this is all about together and I hope your cooperation will be the most important thing in today's event. So let's start. So uh, my name is Moinak Das Gupta and I'll be uh, going forward with the Python uh, basics uh, workshop today on the first stop and on the next stop we will have Nivedita Prasad with us. and then she will be discussing the other topics of python so let's start so first thing is why what is python that is the most important thing that we should know before moving to coding before moving to all those stuffs the first thing is why python so the first most important thing is python is an interpreted high level object oriented general purpose programming language its language construct to help programmers to write clear logical code for small and large scale projects. The thing is, we will not, today we are not here to just know the definitions. We need to know each and every word. So what does the word interpreted means? What is high level? What is object oriented? And what is general purpose programming language? Thing is interpretation. There's a, there's a huge thing called interpretation and compilation. Okay. As we move forward, we will get to know that what is interpretation and what is compilation. So just for now, you just get to know that Python is an interpreted programming language and it is a high level language. Okay. So coming to the point, what is high level programming language? We all know that in Python means any programming or any set of computer, we have what we have like different language levels high level language, intermediate language, low level language. So Python is a high level language. Why? Because it is easily readable by human beings. Next word. Next Python is object oriented. We can separately define the object and work on that. Next Python is a general purpose programming language, which directly mean that Python is used for any purpose means you can use for different sectors in different programs and for large scale projects also. So keeping all these things in mind, we will move forward with learning Python. So why we are learning Python means Python, we are other languages also, but why specifically Python today? 
because python is having some complex type of data types and various important stuffs that are hugely important in developing anything okay if you are want to develop some application or develop some website or anything a project regarding any field you can easily use python to do do those things why because in python you are provided with list set dictionary tuples all these things along with the traditional things such as integer float string and all those stuffs so keeping all this thing in mind python is highly used in this case i hope i am clear to you all and if you have any doubt please go forward and shoot your doubts in the chat box and i hope some of our friends will definitely get in touch with you and give the proper solution to your answer even i am also going to see the chat box after a few minutes so if you have any doubt at any point just don't think about what others think just put your doubt shoot your doubts in the chat box so the next thing come who is a designer of python because today we are learning it so we should know that who is, who designed it so it is g van rossum and it was first established in 1991 yes 1991 when python first came and what amazing fact at this point what the amazing fact i know everyone you know that what means python the first thing that came in mind if you are not a computer student then definitely a first thing that will came in in mind that is python is a snake but the name python of this programming language doesn't come from the snake it come from a very comedy show very means famous comedy show that is monty python's flying circus it is a american uh, comedy series you can say from there the name python came so i think it's a really amazing fact because many people doesn't know this thing so why python this one is important question in many people's mind let me tell you a story that i just came to know a article few days back that why it is written it's specially for software industries and software companies i just go uh, gone through article in linkedin only i have seen it what was that it says that in every year india is producing a lot of computer science engineers okay not specifically computer science means they mean to say that engineers those who are capable of joining any software company but unfortunately the sad reality is only 4% of them know the basic knowledge of what they are doing this fact is released by a authenticated source and it was shared in linkedin so what it was it was saying that in a product based company people coming from different background from different colleges they know how to develop codes how to build beautiful products but they don't know what will be the substitute of this code means suppose you are learning today python and if you are joining in a company and where the company manager says you that sir don't use python use this programming language developed by our engineers but you might say that no sir i will use python only but the manager might say you that why python here comes the point that at that moment at that point many engineers are incapable of telling that why they are using this thing so uh, in my concern i think it's a very important thing that we should know why should we use anything it may be a programming language or it may be anything else we are using a technology and technologies are updating day by day so we should know what are the merits and demerits of any technology we are using so the first point of using python is it is very much readable and maintainable code why the fact readable is there the fact readable is there because you can see the python code is totally readable just like a english language if you don't know programming also then also you can read python that what it actually saying you you can have a idea that what the code is saying and why maintainable it is quite simple and clear syntax so that it is easy to use the total code other programming uh, ob means features are uh, it is a program uh, object oriented programming language and structured programming next functional aspect of object oriented programming is the dynamic system automatic memory management this one is a very important feature of python you might ask sir what is automatic memory management let me tell you that in some cases in some programming languages it happened that you need to assign a variable first you need to declare a variable first and then you need to assign that value to a variable why this thing happens because each and every variable or each and every memory space consists of many garbage values 
and we uh, in case of other programming languages what we need to do we need to first clear those garbage value manage the memory and then we need to use that space for other cases so this is one important factor in other programming language but what python offers us python give us that opportunity to not only just means you need to you don't need to think that where is my variable i have not declared it it may be full of garbage it we know we didn't need to think about these things what we need to do we need just to uh, initialize a variable and it's done nothing more than that so python creates a automatic memory management system it automatically relocate the garbage value and mention all the original address and values to a particular position so this is a very important thing of python apart from this it is cross platform oriented so it work in every platform whether it may be a mac or it may be some other operating system doesn't mean anything or it can be a windows anything linux it works in every platform so obviously we should use that code or that programming language which is versatile so apart from this thing python consists of a huge number of libraries standard libraries and this is the reason why i use python because i know it's very boring to write a particular code which is very long and we need to use it other than if you have that code already written just call the function and use it so in that case python provides a huge number of standard libraries <coughs> sorry apart from that we have open source frameworks so a framework play a very important role okay so these frameworks are hugely available in python such as django flags pyramid and python gui graphical user interface of python is really cool and it definitely going to attract you guys in the next session we will having gui also so keep your seat belts tight because we are having those things so another important facts that we generally use about python is python helps us to develop software development stuffs in field of desktop apps as well as web apps along with it also helps us in complex scientific and numerical app calculations also such as i can tell you in case of statistics in case of statistics a very famous programming language that is r r is used in case of statistics but after when the python came in boom then what happens this r is okay but many people jump to python why because one thing i have said about the standard libraries another thing is python provides a huge number of Uh, numeric uh, scientific numeric systems or scientific numeric calculations that are easily done with python so that is one of the main reason other than that you, if you are aware of big data or data analysis then python is going to help you and in case of artificial intelligence or if you are planning for machine learning then definitely python will be your guide throughout the route okay because we nowadays we use machine learning projects a small even a very small regression or you can say uh, any classification project also in case of machine learning we develop with the help of python why again the same thing python provides you the easy and user friendly procedure to develop it and other than easy prototype developments are one of the important feature of python so whatever we have talked till now that are the features so now let's talk about the application see when we are having a lot of features and definitely we will be having a lot of applications some of the applications i have mentioned that are web develop in the field of web development in the field of machine learning artificial intelligence in the field of software development desktop guis data science visualization and web scrapping okay if you have any doubt regarding any of this you can uh, just shoot out in the chat box as well as i will also like to describe you that web scrapping is something like extracting the data from a website uh, desktop gui means that graphical user interface presentation machine learning and artificial intelligence i think you know how a machine or a computer predicted values and can be used as used as a intelligence which is artificially obviously because a machine doesn't have its own intelligence but we can develop things by which a machine can predict or can think that what should be the uh, output that should be given so these are the major applications of python and software development also has a huge impact when we are using python so apart from this all scripting and all these things coming to hardware topic that is robotics yes 
in, if you are working in a hardware domain, if you are planning to develop some robots or any bots, anything, any car, any remote control device or something like that. And if there is some place where you need to code your processor, that how it should work or how we should move with that or how will be the processing setup in case of robotics, Python will be your game changer. I'm telling that because it helps you to make the logical representation much more easier. In that case, we are literally using Python nowadays because nowadays it's a booming language and having a lot of applications and support and all those features, Python plays a major role here. Okay, so a few small basic stuff like what is console. I think everyone know console is a terminal where the program gives the output. So in every case, we have a console, something like that, where you can get the output and translator. Translator is a very important thing. What is translator actually? Translator is something which converts a high level language to a low level language. Why? Because our machines only know how, how a low level language works because it doesn't understand how human talk. So machine can only understand how a low level language works. So translator converts a high level language to a low level language. So now here's an important question that I would like to means describe it means everyone should know this thing that a difference between a compiler and interpreter. So let me explain it in a very easy way. I will not stretch this thing that there are many program, many so programming languages such as C, C++ that literally use uh, as a compiler, compiler language. Okay, they are compiled and they then they provide the output. Similarly, we have Python, Ruby, MATLAB, and this type of languages are interpreted language. So, what is the basic difference between a compiler and an interpreter? I think this one is very confusing to some people. So let me give you a small representation that in case of compiler, what happens? Suppose you have written 10 lines of code. A compiler will do what? It will start reading the code from the first line. It will complete read, uh, reading the code up to 10 lines and then it will throw you the errors if you have any or it will give you the output. This is a basic rule of compiler. What the interpreter does? interpreters does something different what it did it actually read a single line of code throws the output or the error if you have any and then move to the second one so this is the basic difference between compiler and, and interpreter in the first point i've already written that compiler complete you know, works com in a complete program at once and then the entire output or input it gives and an interpreter works line by line so this is a very important stuff regarding compiler and interpreter one more important thing, a, comp uh, a compiler and interpreter, there is a one more difference that is, suppose you are compiling a program, it takes more memory as compared to an interpreter. Okay, because interpreter is just doing one by one and it's not generating any intermediate object code. Let me tell you one thing, what happens in case of a compiler. In case of compiler, a very simple thing, okay. In case of compiler, Compiler first extract the code that you have written and moved it to a intermediate language, intermediate code, and then it goes to a machine level language. So this is the workflow of a compiler. In case of interpreter, what happens? Interpreters directly extract the code that you have written and then throws it to the machine in a low level language. So there is no intermediate object code. That's why sometimes the memory management of interpreter is much more efficient as compiled to as compared to the compiler okay so one one question just came in my mind i would like to ask you and i will request anyone if uh, any one of you if you can answer it then please unmute yourself and answer we have till now whatever we have said we have already talking about the advantages of python interpreter is much good as compared to compiler but there is also a small disadvantage about the interpreted programming languages as compared to the compiler based programming language. You can say uh, advantage of C++ uh, against Python. Can any one of you tell what is that? You guys can. Python has more runtime than C++. Uh, okay. Uh, can you please repeat it? Actually a voice break in between. 
uh, python has more runtime than uh, c++ yeah actually means you are taking that the time complexity means the time taken for running a code for python is much yes. more as compared to c++ right okay. yes so yes anyone can tell why it is he has said totally correct but why it is why it is so anyone You guys can try it. We are just Python. Yeah. Python first converts that high level language into a C level language and which in turn converts into machine level language. So it's a long process. Uh, see, Python is an interpreter, means interpreter based programming language. So what happens, it directly extract the code and throw it to the machine and the machine will get the out, means give you the output. Whereas the compiler would do what? It, First, take the code, then move it to an interpreted uh, mid intermediate level language, and then to a machine level language. But why Python is little bit slower as compared to C++ or some other programming languages? Because, see one thing: a machine only understands a uh, machine level language. But what Python is doing? Python is directly throwing the code to the machine, and the machine need to understand it because it is not directly a machine level language. It's literally getting converted one by one. But while as a compiler, it it might be taking more memory because of the intermediate object code, but it is easily understandable by the machine. So it gives the output a little bit faster. So this is a small disadvantage of using the interpreter-based language, that is Python, you can say. Other than that, it is very good. Means if you are quite interested in development-based working, then Python will be going to a ma play a major role in that case. Okay, but in case of CP means competitive programming, you might be using compiler-based programming languages such as C++. So I think these are the basic difference between compiler and interpreter. I hope I am clear to you guys. At least I have tried it, and I hope you can understand it. So before moving to the hands-on workshop, let us know about some beautiful projects of, of python means if you have done if you are planning to work with python then which fields or which areas should you explore so python helps you to build attendance system live counting of number of people daisiness detection phase detection and so many stuffs so with the help of python you can take the help of computer vision also it means including all this thing this type of projects can be made See, live counting of people, I have just attached a picture where you can see that two people are coming inside and one people is going outside. And in between, there is a, a thing written status, which is tracking sometime and sometime waiting. And down how many and up how many it is also showing. So what actually it is doing, see, there is a yellow line given. And we are also using computer vision in this case. So what we actually do, our computer vision actually track the number of motion of people. So if the motion is coming inside the yellow line, then it is counting as going inside. And if it is going outside, then it is counting outside. So in this case, we in this way, we actually use Python to develop these projects. And if you are planning to do with some other language, then it might be very difficult or you cannot use different APIs to communicate with your app and the project you are planning to do. And it might be quite a uh, big, things to manage all those things but in python it's literally very easy and simple to use for everyone so till now any questions regarding anything that i have said you can throw out in the chat box or we can move to directly to the workshop part and we'll practice okay let me see once Okay, fine. So I hope we can directly move to the practice session. So, okay, first uh, let me tell you that I'll be doing in Colab. So this is a Colab platform that where I'll be doing. So, but before doing that, let me show you how you will start with Colab. Okay, see, it is quite easy and simple. Just, you know, don't need to do many things. Just go to Google and type Colab. Just type Colab and click. You will get Google Colab. Just click on it. You will get something like this interface. Okay, one thing your might be your this Colab will be in white color because I have modified it, so it is in black in my case. 
but i think you might be getting in white color and one more thing the uh, the things that are written that might be little bit small i have uh, taken the font higher because so that you guys can see next what you have to do just click on new notebook just click on it it will take 10 seconds i think to open a new notebook will be opening and this is your interface for collab in your case it might be white if you are doing it for the first time i have modified it that's why it is black in my case next thing what you have to do just click on connect when you are clicking on connect your coding area is totally active to work on okay in collab we have two things that you need to understand first one is for writing code this place you can write any code if you want suppose i am writing n equals to 10 this one is something that is code i can write it here and if i press enter it goes to the next line in this way it moves one more thing if you want to write any text then you can click on the text part a new block will open and here you might have started to interrupt some students are asking you to repeat from the first of the collab okay okay sure thank you for informing me because i cannot see the chat box so it's very thankful to you to inform me okay just wait okay just go on your google i'm going a bit slow then then i think everyone can capable of doing it okay so in google you just write collab and click enter you will get the first link that is google collab just click on it you will get a interface something like this in this interface it might be white in your case because i have modified it as i have said but uh, uh, you need to go to new notebook you can see a new notebook option here just click on new notebook if you are new and if you have something written say i have done already hands on workshop on python jumble word physical so i can click any one of them but you can you guys can click on new notebook so click on it so this one is a place where you guys will be playing with all those stuffs okay so here we will be playing with it just wait for a second okay yeah ah so in this place you will be uh, doing uh, coding all those stuffs so this block this block is a coding block when you need you when you need to write any code you need to type it here and first thing after joining this collab this interface do one thing click on connect why because this notebook will be now active to perform any coding or any kind of stuff other if you are not doing this thing then i think it is not properly working it will take much time when you will run the code okay so you can write your codes here suppose i have i can write n equals to uh, 50 55 so if you uh, click enter it will go to the next line you can write p equals to suppose i am writing p equals to 10 you can go next line in this way it can work this each part is known as a block so here each part is known as a block so if you want to run this block then what you have to do just click on the block and press shift enter shift enter so it's moving and it's totally run see p n equals to 55 p equals to 10 so there is nothing to show output so it's done and we are we have came to the next block this is the way of doing if you want to enter any text suppose any text like suppose i am doing a uh, practice so this is a practice session so what should i do just click on the text button you will get a text bar okay just click on here and type practice okay so if you type this and you can do blob bold you can do make it big anything you want and just click outside it will sweat yeah it will work so this is the way of working with collab so i will show you different codes but this is a basic so i'm just uh, showing you how to work with collab if you want to delete any block it's very simple just click on the block go to the uh, bin button and just click it delete it same case for the practice session also you if you want to practice text bar also if you want to delete it just click on it and you can delete it so this is the basic interface of using collab if you want to name that file you can just click on here is written untitled to you can just click on it and give it a name suppose i'm writing practice 
So now it is named as practice. So this is the way of using Collab. I hope everyone is uh, comfortable with it so that I can move forward with using it. Please let me know. Someone is, someone is asking uh, which button do you press? Control plus to run. Okay, for running it, you just press shift plus enter. Another way, okay, let me show you one thing. Suppose I am writing uh, m equals to 20 and print m. See, this is the way of uh, printing something in a Python code. Suppose I'm assigning m equal to 20. Okay, so the variable m is assigned with the value 20 and I'm now printing it. So how can I print it? One thing you can do, press shift and enter. It will run and give the output as 20. So output is given in the next line of the block. Other than that, if you want to do, if you don't, means if you're not willing to use shift plus enter, then you can do one thing else. Suppose I'm writing n equals to 10 plus 20, enter. Okay, not do, let's do, let's do the basic first. Enter and print 10. If you're not willing to press shift enter, then what you can do, you can just click on here. If you click on the here, you will uh, get to know that this one is a run shell. So run shell key, you can click it here. It will also run. In any of the way you can do, you can press shift enter or you can click on the uh, this button so that it will run. Any of this can work. So uh, is it clear means, is there anything that I need to uh, tell about the collab basics? You guys can unmute yourself and let me know. It's a complete interactive session. We need to talk among us. Yes, but it's clear. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Uh, is there any difference between Jupyter Notebook and Collab? Same. It's completely same. One is online version and another is offline. Means all the things that I have said just now, it is same as in Jupyter. You have to do in the same way. In Jupyter also, you have to press Shift Enter to run a code, or you can click here. And same thing in Jupyter also, you will having a block. You can press Enter to go to the next line and Shift Enter to run the code. Same thing in case of Jupyter also. Okay. Okay. Chalo. So let's uh, move to the part. Okay. So these are few things that I have written already. So because I don't want to waste time by writing these things. Uh, so what is a keyword? First thing in Python that we need to know that what is a keyword? The basic thing is keyword means some reserved word in Python. Means it keyword in case of any programming language only, it's something that is reserved word. Suppose uh, you know that in programming languages we have loops. Suppose we have for loop and while loop. So while assigning any variable, you cannot use the name for because the for name is already reserved for considering it as a loop. So keywords are those words that are completely reserved for a particular purpose. So make one thing in mind while naming any variable, any identifier means anything. It can be class, anything. Don't use the names of keyword. It makes your program much more confused and you will not get an output and it will throw an error that identifier name not identified. Okay, something like that we'll get. One more thing in Python, the keywords are case sensitive. What does the word case sensitive mean? Case sensitive mean in Python, you cannot use capital, capital letter and small letter means both are not same. Capital letter, capital letter is different thing and small letter is different thing. The program doesn't understand the, both the things are same. It will completely differ two things. This is quite simple. I think everyone will know this thing. Identifier means identifier means all those class function variables, the names which you assign. Suppose you are as I suppose in the previous program, I have written m equals to 50. So I, so I have assigned m as 50. So I have declared m as a variable. So this is an identifier. In similarly, you can assign a class or a user defined function in this way. So this is the way of identifying uh, means denoting an identifier. So there are a few rules of writing any identifier. So what should be the rules? The rules are the identifier can be combination of uppercase, lowercase, digit, I mean anything. It can be alphanumeric also. But one thing, just keep it in mind. This line is very important. Our identifier cannot start with a digit. 
don't write like this suppose i am showing you suppose i have written uh you can write sum equal to 10 okay so i have assigned sum as a variable so let's run it i have i'm pressing shift enter it's running and it's completely done because here nothing is required to give the output so it's run it's done but if i write one sum equal to 10 i am writing a impeach means a number first and then i'm running it it is showing me an error what the error is invalid syntax you cannot write something like this a variable doesn't start with a it means a number it should always start with the alphabet this thing one more thing you cannot use any kind of special symbols in your you cannot use any kind of special symbols in your identifiers okay this thing you should keep in mind and one thing identifiers can be of any length you can use on in some you can use only s otherwise you can use hundreds of letter it all may mean the same thing only so these are the basic things so <coughs> Now let's tell me something about the literals. So what actually literals are? Literal is a raw variable or raw data given to a variable or constant. So you can just tell that literal is something that is given to a variable, uh, means the data we are assigning. Suppose in case of sum, we have assigning it 10. So it is a numeric literal, okay. So this is, uh, there are various type of literals such as string, float, I will show you each of them. First thing, let me show you how to print anything and take input of anything in case of Python. Suppose you want to print some, so what you will do, print, in bracket you can type some and run it. It will give you an output 10. So if you want to know that what type of data is this, is 10 a float or 10 is an integer or 10 is a string. I don't know. So let's check how to check. Print. Let me print. What I will print? I will print the type of the variable. What is the type of the variable? It totally depends on what value you are giving to the variable. Okay. So let's check the type. In Python, as I have said, that everything is completely readable in as like English only. So, so we will write type P. Sorry, I think I just lost the connection. Sorry for that. Am I audible right now? Please let me know. Yes, Bia. Yes, Bia. Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, Thank Bia. you. Sorry for yes, the Bia. inconvenience. Oh, just let me present it one second. Just wait for a second. Okay. 
I hope this screen is visible. Okay. So see, I have written type yes. sum. So what it has given me, it has given me int. That means the val the value given in sum that is an integer type. Suppose I am writing f equal to one point four. So let's check what f is. So type f. Let's run it. It's giving me float. So let's write. Uh, you can say m equals to. Okay, one more thing for writing string. What you need to do, you need to apply double quotes. So let's write m equals to dsc. So let's run it. It's giving me m value. Now let's write type m. It's giving me string. So these are the basic literals that we actually use. So I will not waste much time in showing you how literals work. So let's directly move to the operators. In Python, we have some basic operators. So let's see how the operators work. Let's wait for a minute. Okay. Fine. Okay. So let me show you how operators work actually. So suppose I have p equal to 2 and q equals to 5. So there are various type of operators such as arithmetic operator, logical operator and we have conditional operators also, bitwise operators, so many operators. So let me show you a few of them, how it actually works in case of Python. So suppose we can write r equals to or you can write sum sum equals to p plus q how p plus q uh, and let's print it just wait q and let's print sum so it's giving seven so plus x as a addition operator similarly we have minus also as subtraction operator so i'm not showing the minus it is same thing only I'll, I'll be showing you something different that is division. So how division will work? See, suppose I'm dividing Q means Q divided by P. So let's write it div equals to Q division sign P and let's print it. It's giving me 2.5. That means if you apply a single division, then what it will give? It will give you a float value. Okay. It will give you a float value. Similarly, if you apply, I'm writing now div one equals to Q. I'm using double slash P. What does this double slash mean? This double slash mean float division. So let's see what will be the output. Same thing only I'm giving Q divided by P but just applying double slash. So let's see what it will be. Uh, logical, this all are arithmetic variables. So we have one more thing also that is the assigning uh, operators also. So how we can do it? In other programming languages, you can write, suppose I want to write x equal to five. On the next line, I can write x equal to five plus, one, uh, okay, let's write x plus five or x plus one, let me write, and then print the value, print x. So what it will give? It will give definitely six, but in Python, what we can write in place of this, we can write in place of this, such as not writing like this, let us write x plus equal to one. Let's see what will be the output. It's also showing us six. That means whenever you are using like this, plus equal to or minus equal to, multiply equal to, that means it is equal to, okay, I'm writing you, I'm showing you one more thing. Suppose x equal to 20. And if I want to write it x into equal to 10, that means what? That means, that means x equal to x into 10, okay. You can see that I have written this thing and this one came in green color. Why? Because hash used to, uh, hash is used in Python for commenting. Okay, I have commented this line, 
by the way what is commenting commenting means when our interpreter will read this line when he will i am not telling he sorry when it will get a uh, hash it will say what it will ignore this line okay so it will ignore this line in that case we are using commenting so to comment a single line use hash and if you want to comment multiple lines then you can use triple single inverted columns okay so let's do it i will show you how to comment multiple lines also so let's print x it's showing us 200 so i think you guys are not capable of doing these things because in place of into you can place multi minus also you can place division also you can apply float division also same thing will happen same thing okay one more thing how to take an input in python this one is very important suppose i want to uh, take an input so i can write it n equals to use the keyword input there is a keyword name input in that you can write enter your name this one is a comment this one is a line that you want to uh, show to your user enter your name i have written it and if i run this thing what it will give it will give me a space to write my name let me write it my name is moina and let me enter it it's already taken so let me print n print n Sorry. it's giving the value moina so let me do one thing in place of moina let me uh tell me okay enter your age let me write it enter your age let's run this code suppose i am writing 20 let's run it it's showing 20 let's run the output of n print n it's giving me 20 okay so let's write type n It's showing string. Here is a very important question. Why it is showing string? See, the value of n is 20. It should show integer, but it is showing string. Why it is so? It is showing string just because, always remember, in case of Python, Python always take an input in form of a string. It never take our input as an integer. Suppose if I want to multiply n with Two times, suppose I want to multiply 20 with 2, it should be 40, right? But let's do it. M equals to N into 2. The answer should be coming 20. But let's see what it will come. Print M. It's coming 2020. The drastic bad year. Why it is coming so? Because when it is a string, when it is multiplied two times, what happens? It's, it, it will sit twice. It will not multiply each other. So these are the basic things of operator and how to deal with this thing. I will not take much time now because we'll have Nivedita also. Plus, I will just tell you what is conditional statement, how conditional statement works, that is if else part and looping part. So in case of Python, how conditional statement works? In case of Python, we can use simple by doing if else. So let's see, let's write a program. Suppose uh, I can write Suppose let, uh, let's take an input. Suppose uh, let me take that n equals to. Okay, before doing that, let me show you how to do typecasting. So typecasting is a very important thing. So how to do typecasting. So basically there are two types of typecasting. One is implicit typecasting. Another one is explicit typecasting. So how to do typecasting. In case of implicit typecasting, what you can do? You can just implicit typecasting means when the typecasting is done automatically. Okay, how it, it is done? N equals to 20. And suppose if you are, if it is done, then you can, as I have shown that if I write type N, then it is automatically giving me integer. But what happens, see in this case, suppose it is showing me type of N is what here? Suppose let me run this one once again. Uh, let me run this one once again, this code. Enter your age. Suppose I am giving you 22. Now print the value of n. It is showing 22. 
Now, if it is showing type of n, it will again show me string. But if I want to change this 22 in from string to an integer, what should I do? A small thing. While taking the input, I will write print a first bracket, then the total thing will be inside the bracket and another bracket at the last. What it does, whatever the out means, whatever will be taken string by the input function, it will be passed through the int function and it will be typecasted and then it will come as output. So let's run it. And this one is known as explicit typecasting. So again, I'm writing 22. Let's do it. Then let's run the n. It's showing 22. Let's run the type n. Now it is showing int. So this one is explicit typecasting. Let's run the next block. Now n into 2, it is giving 44 because it is a string. I hope up to this it is clear. So let me do a short conditional statement program. Suppose I can write a uh, t equals to enter input. Let's write int input because I want an integer. Okay. So int and inside int I will write input. And inside input I will write a message that I want to show to the user. Enter a number. So after that, what I will do? After that, suppose I am now creating a conditional statement. That means if else block. I will create an if else block. So what will be the condition? Let us assume that whatever the number the user will be given, if the number is greater than 10, then I will print a message that your number is greater than 10. If the number is less than 10, I will print a message your number is less than 10. And if the number is equal to 10, then I can uh, write the message that the number is equal to 10. So how we will do it? A if block. If now I'll write p. If p means the number given by the user. If it is greater than 10. See, in case of Python, no need to use brackets. You can use it, no problem. But if you don't use it also, then also it will not affect you. Then one thing that is mandatory, you have to give a colon. Without colon, the if block will not complete. Click enter. One thing you observe that the cursor come after few spaces. This is known as indentation. While writing any program, suppose if block, that means you will write the code inside the if. In Python, Python always mention, always use indentation. Indentation, sorry, indentation is mandatory in Python. You have to use indentation. If you don't apply indentation, the program will give you an error at the output. So I am giving if p is greater than 10. So let's write a message, print, what I will print. Let me print, your number is greater than 10. Your number is uh, greater than 10, okay? So now I, will, I have to give another condition that the number should be less than 10. So what I, will, I should write? In other programming language, you might be writing else if, but in Python, what we'll write? We'll write elif. Elif means what? Else if, that is only elif, okay? Elif, it is written as E-L-I-F, elif. While writing elif, what you can do, you can give a condition. What will be the condition? P less than 10. Again, colon, same, again a message. Your number is less than 10, okay. Similarly, another uh, block there will be, that is else block that the number will see if it is not equal to 10 if it is not greater than 10 log less than 10 then definitely it will be equal to 10 so another block that is print your number is equal to 10 so let's run it it's asking me for a number so let me give it 20 your number is greater than 10 so if I again run it and let me give it uh, one or oh, let me give it 10 only, your number is equal to 10. So it's completely running. One small thing I would like to tell you that what is the difference between elif and else? In case of elif, what happens? You always need to give a condition. While you are using elif, then you have to give a condition here. And if you are using else, then there is no means there is no way means no place to give any condition you can directly miss 
whatever will be going to the if block other than if block everything will be coming to else block but if you are using elif then what happens the first the number is taken in p then p will check in if block if it is satisfied then it will go to the p block if it is not satisfied it will go to the elif block again it will check if elif block is also not satisfied then only it will go to the else block okay so this is a basic program of writing how a conditional statement works so let me show you how uh, loops work so what are loops loops mean running a same thing multiple number of times okay in python we have two type of loops basically one is for loop another one is while loop i think i am going bit faster but it's okay these are basic things and i think it will be helpful if you have any doubt you can let me know i think uh, i will clear you after nivedita's session so i will clear all those parts so for your uh, for loop and uh, while loop we have these two loops we will be using one function in case of for loop also that is range function i'll be explaining that part so let me show you how while loop works while loop works like some in case of while loop what you can do you first need to initialize a value suppose i have initialized i then what you have to do in while loop just we was we need to use the keyword while while suppose i if i is greater than i if i is less than 10 suppose if i is less than 10 then i have said when you are using a block you need to use a colon just remember one thing while in python you are using a block it may be if else block it may be while loop block it may be for loop block any block what you have to use you have to use a uh, colon at the end of that uh, first line okay so while i is Okay is it visible properly Yes we yeah Okay okay fine thank you So in 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 uh, in while block what i will write just see suppose i want to print the values of n so let me write print uh, i sorry print the i next what i have to do i have to write see first i equals to 1 in this line what i have written in this line i have initialized what is this one this one is condition i have given a condition now the last thing that i have to do that is either increment or decrement in loop this is mandatory you have to do either increment or decrement so what it will be let me write uh, i plus equal to 1 in python so i am writing in python style okay you can do you can write it i equal to i plus 1 also but since i am doing python so i am writing in this style so let me run it let's see how, what will be the output it is giving me the output from 1 to 9 it is printing all the outputs okay so this is a basic way of writing a while loop so this is very simple just keep one thing in mind that is uh, while you are writing this thing 
make the indentation properly see one thing i will show you see suppose i have not given a indentation let me remove the indentation so let's see what it will happen it will throw a error because they, this is not applicable in python what you have to do you have to always you have to always do what just okay what you have to do always you have to always apply your indentation then only it will work otherwise it will not work so this is a basics of for loop uh, while loop sorry so let me now show you for loop for loop is also very easy for for loop what you have to do you have to do nothing like just like while loop you have to don't initialize in the first line you have what you, what you can do you can directly write for suppose i can write for i in range this one is range function so suppose i in range then i have written okay and then i have to give a colon so let me first explain you what is range function see in range function there are three things inside first thing is okay first let me run the program and then i will show you print i let's run it it's giving 0 to 9 so what is actually range function range function means in range by default it start from 0 comma then the number i have given and then there is a step one see in range i have written three things first the zero i have written that is known as the starting number that in i will be first zero that is that is why the first time the print statement give zero that next in the range block that is 10 10 shows that up to how much it will go it will go up to 10 but it is showing 9 why because in range function this second position this position is n plus 1 suppose you have written 10 that means it will always go to minus 1 position suppose you have written 10 that means it will go up to 9 suppose you have written 20 it will go up to 19 if, if you have if you have written 15 it will go to uh, 14 so this one is the second position the third position is the number of steps see first it comes 0 then it come 1 then it come 2 then it come 3 so it is jumping by one step only so it is giving 1 suppose i am changing the first position from 0 to 2 so let's run it it is giving it is starting from 2 and it is going to 9 now suppose one of you tell uh, ask me that uh, uh, just show me if it is going to up to 10 only if i want to make it go to 10 then what should i do i will make it 11 if i will make it 11 then it will go to go up to 10 so it is going up to 10 now one of you may ask me that i want two three step jumping two step jumping so let me move this one and give to now see 2 4 6 8 it is jumping in two steps so this is a basic utilization of range range the first position is known as start the second position is known as stop and the third position is known as step by default by default the range take the first position as by default means if you are not mentioning anything then by default it will take the first position as 0 and the last position as 1 so when we are using range 10 that means by default it has taken the first position as 0 the second position that i have given 10 and the third position is by default 1 so this is the basic if uh, for looping conditions means for loop statement that i have shown so these are the basic things i was planning to show you much more things i have already planned to show you break continuous statements and all those stuffs but i think it is not possible to show everything today but i will uh, show you something interesting today okay before moving to nivedita session i will show you i will take last 5 minutes to show you some interesting fun activities okay we have learned lot of things so let's do some fun okay have you ever heard what is a fizzbuzz game can anyone explain me what is fizzbuzz game fizzbuzz game can anyone explain me anyone you guys can unmute yourself and uh, tell me if you know okay so let me we have to run yeah tell we have to run a range from 1 to 1000 or any uh, given number yeah and uh, in in the in the range the those numbers which are uh, divisible by 5 uh, uh, they will print the the, the statement will be print uh, phrase the numbers which are divisible by 9 they will print in bus and those which are uh, are which are not divisible by either number they will be printing this bus in a yeah, series of bits we will be printing like that. you have said correctly only actually the number which is divisible by 3 it is fizz 
the number which is divisible by five that is buzz and the number which is divisible by both three and five it is fizzbuzz okay this game is oh, yeah, quite yeah, like uh, means uh, you can say quite brainstorming why because suppose three of your friends are playing this game it is very confusing you need to calculate all those things so I, I have developed a small program writing a fizzbuzz game so what i've written just see i've just taken that i've just printed a first statement let's uh, start the fizzbuzz game and then i have did, did what enter a number so i have ju just asked the user to enter a number the number will be first entered as a string in input and then it will pass through the in int that is explicit type casting and the n will be now an integer then what i have done i have uh, done a for step uh, for loop what in the for loop i have done in between the for loop i have started i from range 1 that means the starting number of i is 1 and the ending one is n plus 1 suppose you are giving me 10 as an input so it will run up to 10 to confirm it that it will run up to 10 i, I have written at 10 plus 1 that means n plus 1 then what i have done i have done given a if statement in if block i have written what if i modulus 3 one thing what is modulus modulus means reminder if uh, the number you have given suppose if the number comes as 1 or, or if the number comes as 15 so if i value is 15 now so if 15 is divided by 3 and the reminder is 0 and and this and is known as logical operator uh, in some other statements you might be using ampersand sign or you might be using some different signs but in python it is simple as english like language so you can directly write and suppose you want to write here okay, let me show you suppose you want to write here or so you can directly write or it will work as a or okay so it's completely english like language only you can directly use it so i have uh, written suppose 15 is divided by 3 and there is no reminder and 15 is also divided by 5 and there is no reminder in that case you will print what you will print that means in block the cursor will enter in this block and it will print i i means the 15 the number and it will be equal to fizzbuzz suppose if you are writing a variable if you are printing a variable along with a message then what you have to do first or anywhere you can just write the variable then use a comma and then in inverted commas you just write the message it will automatically print it similarly in uh, elif condition i have given if it is divisible by three just enter uh, uh, just put the number and uh, tell it as fees and similarly if it is divisible by five it, it will you can give it as buzz and if it is not divisible by three five or both then just leave that number and print the number so i have written i so let's run it it is asking me enter a number and it has already printed let's start the game so let's give it a range of 30 or okay, not 30 let's give it a range of 50 so i've given enter see it is giving me output 3 equals to you can see it it's giving me the output 3 equals to 5 uh, 3 equals to fees 5 equals to buzz and yeah 15 fizzbuzz then 30 fizzbuzz 45 fizzbuzz so it is giving me output in this way i hope uh, this is very simple with the help of efls and for loop only you can develop this type of games so if you are uh, means if you are understand whatever i have said till now i think you can develop it if you have any doubt regarding anything you can directly ask me i'm here and one more thing i will just show you a game that is jumble word game this one is also developed by me this one is very simple terminal based game what you can do i, I will be not showing you the total game right now i am just showing you the output so how it will work see first it is asking me enter your name so i am writing the name as suppose Mainak. enter uh, okay okay sorry you can you can see like this yeah it was asking me player one enter your name i have written Moinak. now it is asking player two enter your name suppose i am writing b enter it is asking me the jumble word is this one Moinak, it's your turn can you tell the exact right word suppose i don't know what the exact what is what is suppose i have written uh i think it's laptop maybe lap top let's do uh it's showing me yeah your score is one press one to continue the game and zero to one suppose i am pressing one and it is continuing the game next it is showing me 
jumble what again a jumble what is given i don't know what it is suppose i don't know so i have written something else deep it's your turn tell the exact what suppose deep doesn't know what the what is so deep has written something else and entered so it is giving what it is giving the output sorry wrong answer better luck next time the correct word word was uh, hardware press one to continue and zero to end the game this game will be continued thousand number of times it has no barrier so let me end the game so i am writing zero and enter it is giving me congratulations moinak your final score is one congratulations deep your final score is zero thanks for playing so this is a basic terminal based game that i like to show you all guys so you can ask me about this thing after the complete session i will definitely explain so i think uh, that's all from my side i would like to end my presentation right now here and i hope you guys enjoyed it you can please give me a feedback if you like to uh, that you have enjoyed it or not uh, that is i have made you something that is this session little bit fruitful or not i hope you guys enjoyed it you can let me know if you feel like and uh, this moment i would like to hand over it to nivedita i hope nivedita will make you to the highs and downs of the python so the floor is all yours nivedita Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Are you audible? So uh, I have one doubt. Uh, it's already five forty-seven. So should I continue today or should we shift tomorrow? Because we have because I have to discuss more very topics. So should we continue or because it's already five forty-seven and we have to end our session at six. Let's continue tomorrow. And others? Ah, uh, Chaitali, you can tell something about it. Means, uh, should Nivedita continue it today, or should she continue it tomorrow? No, no. We should listen about the audience because if they are interested, then we can continue. Definitely, definitely. So I would like to request the audience. Uh, yeah, audience. Please. I want to continue tomorrow because it's already one and a half hours. So I need a break. So I I want to continue it tomorrow. Sure, sure. So others, please let us know that will you like to continue it tomorrow? Because so I think I have a time. Yeah. Uh, in the in the comment in the comment section they are saying uh, tomorrow tomorrow. So suggest a time according okay. to your convenience. Someone is saying it's starting tomorrow. Three, five, five, ten. Look, I think five p.m. is favorable for all. Means it's the average time for all. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I also think so. Yeah. So let us let us fix that five p.m. only. Is it okay for everyone? Uh, five five p.m. tomorrow. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. They're saying yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. I think today I've extended it a lot because I have I need to do a lot of things. All that I've not completed everything, but yeah, I've done a lot of things. Uh, so the time was nearly one and a half hour. I think so. Yeah. Be they are saying five uh, p.m. tomorrow. Is it okay for them? So I think uh, we should uh, end the call right here, and we should continue it. No, more. no, no. Actually, we have something. Okay, fine, mm -hmm. fine, fine, fine. All are interested about quiz. Yeah, I think everyone should be interested about it because it is something brainstorming. So I think. Uh, वन वीक हो गए हैं हम लोगों का ना तो हु इज द विनर कैन यू गेस दैट्स समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग आई थिंक एवरीवन इज इंटरेस्टेड टू नो कम ऑन गाइस ओके श्वेता राशि समवन इज कमेंटिंग एनीवन कम ऑन एवरीवन जस्ट टेल इज आई एनी कुमार अलक कुमार ओके अलक अलक यू आर Oh, saying Mark Zuckerberg. 
yeah mark zuckerberg can be because he knows everything about us he's the winner of these all time yeah yeah that's a uh, yeah, definitely we are i think kashwata i'm not confirm but i'm think kashwata my luck is not good for being a winner no you can answer if you answer then you will be winner na ankush you have to answer na uh so so let's announce it okay so winner is uh, not uh, no. that good luck <laughs> so winner is shweta rashi great congratulations shweta oh my god wow congratulations i hope you will be participating continuously for the next time also because winning is not a particular destiny it's a journey i am i hope you can do it congratulations yeah, sure thank you is there anything you want to share for your hard work <laughs> hard work it was every day on 7 pm on linkedin so that i could get updated every day So who is the second and third? Don't know. Second or third? Uh, I think second. Uh, Se- second is the second is Santa Paul from IT. Yeah, right, Santa. And third. थर्ड अमन 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 हेलो कुमार गॉड ऑफ अगरवाल थर्ड बट गिव ओनली वन देते रहना ठीक है मतलब इतना कभी कभी आ रहा है इतना कम रिस्पॉन्स है कि मन भी नहीं करता है ना कि हाँ इसके बाद भी अगर कोई पोस्ट डालू कोई क्विज करो हम लोग एक्सैक्टली थिंग इज व्हाट गाइस एक्चुअली देखो तुम लोग जो भी कर रहे हो देखो ये पूरा कम्युनिटी है हम तुम लोग तो सीनियर तो मतलब सीनियर जूनियर का कोई बात नहीं है यहाँ पर यहाँ पर सारी चीजें क्या हो रहा है वी आर जस्ट इनकरेजिंग एवरी वन एंड यू गाइज ऑल्सो इनकरेजिंग एस सो तुम लोग जब रेस्पॉन्स करोगे तुम लोग जब ऐसे हमारे साथ पार्टिसिपेट करोगे जैसे आपके इवेंट में फोर्टी फाइव पीपल है तो सारे लोग जब पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं ये क्या कर रहे हैं मुझे भी मोटिवेट कर रहे हैं तुम लोग को कुछ जानने को मिल रहा है तो एवरी थिंग इज ग्रोइंग टूगेदर सो एज चैतली सेट दैट एवरी वन टू पार्टिसिपेट बिकॉज पार्टिसिपेशन मेक्स आज मोटिवेशन गिव्स अस मोटिवेशन सो दैट इन नेक्स्ट ईयर वी कैन ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड समथिंग गुड एंड आई होप एवरी वन इज means going with the same views as i am telling because we together can build something rather than making it a single right so someone is asking what is the role of selecting the winner actually i want to say it bahut log aise hai ki pehle answer kar diya ek din do din uske baad un logo ka answer mila hi nahi so it is not done रेगुलर आंसर करना पड़ेगा और हम लोग एवरेज वाइज लेंगे मतलब मान लो कि आज कोई फर्स्ट आंसर किया देन कल जाके लास्ट आंसर किया बट वो रेगुलर आंसर किया है तो फिर वो ही कॉन्सिडरेशन में पहले आएगा तो फिर रेगुलर आंसर देना ही पड़ेगा इट्स कंपलसरी ऑब्वियसली और जो भी एवरेज वाइज पहले आंसर देगा तो वही विनर होगा तो जस्ट ऐसा नहीं है कि पहले आंसर दो रेगुलर भी देना पड़ेगा कोशिश करो रेगुलर देने का और पहले देने का ठीक है इज इट क्लियर नो 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 ऑब्वियसली नॉट आई थिंक अरिंदम नाम का कोई है वो एडिटेड किया था एडिट इट इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड एक्चुअली so i think we can end here okay um so is there anyone who needs who needs to ask anything or means is there anything that you guys need to say otherwise we can end it uh, thank you for the interaction 
Okay, thank you, Ashutosh. We had an amazing session. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Okay, thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Hope you guys like it. And uh, okay, someone Please is wait, wait, wait. okay. Wait for a second. Someone is Rajesh. Okay. Fine, Rajesh. Fish. Fish. Just give one second. Just wait. I'm presenting it. Within just one minute will be enough for you to understand it. Okay. I hope you can see the screen. Please let me know. You can see it or not. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what the game is? It's very simple with if else and for loop. Actually, when I was going through the session, I was going in a just like Rajasthan Express, but it's okay. So what happened? Uh, first, I have given a print statement where it says that let's uh, start the physics game, and after that, what I have done, I have taken an input in the n variable. N variable, okay. You know that in case of Python, what happens? The input uh, when we are using the input command, this makes the uh, value as string, and then I am explicitly typecasting it with int. and it is now in the value i am getting that is a integer type okay then what happen in case of for loop i i will be starting from 1 and it will be going to n plus 1 suppose here i have taken 50 so i will be going up to 51 so the first value of i is now 1 now 1 will be coming inside the for loop and then it will be going to the if condition and it will check that 1 is divisible by 3 or not if it is not then it will be directly coming out then else if it is again not uh, then again else if it is again not then it is else it will be printing one similarly when 3 is coming then what happen 3 is divisible by 3 uh, and 3 is divisible by 5 no it is not so it will be coming out again in else if it will be going 3 is divisible by 3 okay it will be again getting inside the second else if block and it will press this but it is printed as fish sorry similarly in case of 15 what happens it will enter in the first block only because when we are using and this and operator when we are using what happen in and operator both the condition this condition and this condition both the condition should be satisfied in case of or condition suppose i am if i am writing or here in that case the condition is either any one will be applicable but in case of and operator both the condition should be maintained same thing is happening here so the numbers which are divisible by only 3 that is going inside this block the number which is divisible by only 5 that is going inside this block and the number which is divisible by both that is going inside this block and the number which are not any of this group ba ekhon kotha bole debo o 3000 to ashe jol er jol ala dai jol sab kono ne bollo jol जम्बल वर्ड just see the program okay. yes we are so it's very interesting okay means uh, i can also give you a small assignment also if you can try it at your home see the program yeah but i am thinking a problem in, in my output word. like no okay. no no in that i think what me. problem you are getting it is okay let me show you you have written this block at the last right no 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 i have written it the same only but i okay. I'm not getting it getting? wrong. Uh, like, have uh, means is it a syntactical error or a conditional error? Just check it once. No, no, you can, you can see the where I'm getting it wrong. Okay, just wait. Okay, so. Okay, that just do one thing. Actually, what happened? Your skin is getting blurred little. So do one thing. What you can do? You just uh, I am in the WhatsApp group also. You can just send me your output. I will just rectify it and I will send it to you. We are doing in collab only, I think. 
yes yes we so will collab link i will uh, get in touch with you that whatever wrong is there in it okay i think that will be better okay okay bye so uh, as uh, let me show you once again the uh, jumble word one so the jumble word one is something like this okay See, this one is a jumble word game the program is i'm i've written the program from here but actually the program is starting from the last the program is starting from the play button this one is a function that i have called i think you guys are not yet aware of the function if you are aware of it then it's good if you are not then in the next session you will be getting the knowledge of the uh, function i think after that it will be better if i will explain you uh, but then also i'm explaining it i'm explaining it now a bit that is what in this program what is happening the program start from this button see because all these things are functions so the cursor will not go anywhere it will directly come to this button first it will call the play function it will go to the play where is play yes def play so this one is the function it will go here then it will print these things that already have, uh, i printed print enter your name player 1 name player 2 name then we are assigning player 1 zero score player 2 zero score okay क्योंकि पहले तो सबका स्कोर जीरो ही होता है ना फिर हम लोग क्या कर रहे हैं टर्न भी जीरो कर दे रहे हैं कितना टर्न हुआ जीरो टर्न ठीक है क्योंकि स्टार्ट ही अभी नहीं हुआ गेम फिर हम वाइल वन इसका मतलब क्या है पता है दिस वन इज इनफाइनेट लू ये घूमते ही रहेगा घूमते ही रहेगा जितना टाइम हम लोग इसको घुमाना चाहते हैं ठीक है फिर आई हैव क्रिएटेड वर्ड आई हैव क्रिएटेड पिक वर्ड वेरिएबल ओके and use this choose function what is choose function let's find where is choose where is choose yeah here is choose function in choose function i have created a list i think you guys are not yet aware so i think um, you guys are not capable of understanding this thing but then also i'm telling once in a very fast way i will do one thing after you are completing this total session and in the end of the last session i will explain the jumble word once again i think that will be better for you okay then also i'm explaining it once again right now this is a list of words i have already written say such as rainbow computer laptop hardware software umbrella internet so these all are the words okay so the computer will choose words from this from here only then i have created a pick from uh, variable and inside pick variable what i have done i am using a random function what is random function random function will randomly choose words from this list this is the huge advantage of random function you guys will get to know what is random function by random function uh, random dot choose random is the library name and inside random we have choose choice sorry in uh, in choice with the help of the choice function i am choosing a word from this list okay so one word is already choice and it is inside now pick now i am returning pick so pick will be returned to this that means in pick word the word is now here then q and will jumble the word so jumble is also a function let's go to the jumble function there is a jumble function and inside the jumble function i have created jumbled variable and inside that variable i have created a space and dot join random dot sample this one is something very uh, means a bit complicated you can think because you are not guys are not yet known to these things join is a function and inside that i have created random dot sample dot word dot length just till now you guys just understand that this is something for jumbling the words okay the letters are jumbling and it is saved in jumble word and again i am returning the jumble word so again it is going to this line in place of qn and i am printing the qn now my question is prepared and now i am replying uh, giving the question to the user now the user if the user plays it tells the exact correct word means what i am doing i am doing turn divided by 2 means for even number of entries it will be for the first number user for odd number of entries it will be for the second number user so similarly i am just explaining you a brief that is in this part what i have done up to uh, yeah up to this part what i have done in this part i have asked the user that please tell me the answer user will tell the answer if the answer is correct answer equal to equal to pick word if the answer is correct then only what i am doing then only i am updating the score of the user and printing you have done good if not then else block else block i am showing that sorry wrong answer 
same thing i have done for user 2 also and this step is continuously going on and at the last what i have done i have done that thank you and i have given user 1 name user 2 name in this way so this is a basic flow what i have done first i have created the list then i have created uh, jumble words then i have created the play that means how the workflow will go on and at last i have created a thank you function where i will show the names of the user along with the score so this is a complete workflow one thing what i can do after the total complete session of python is done i can explain this thing to you i think that will be much more fruitful for everyone is it okay okay bhaiya okay okay so thank you everyone for joining the session hope you guys enjoyed it so thank you you guys may leave i think so chaitali uh, is the uh, means should the leave right now yeah all can leave now okay thank you everyone for joining the session